Hello viewers, welcome to Bakumat. And today's lesson will be looking at conjugate sets. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly subscribe and hit on the notification bell so that when we release a new video, you'll be the first person to be notified. Now let's get started. So first look at the meaning of conjugate set. When we talk of conjugate set, our main focus is to change the sign between two terms of a binomial set. So when we talk about the binomial set, then we can think about the square root of E plus square root of B. So these are binomial sets. And to find its conjugate, then we have to change the sign in between them to its opposite sign. So the opposite sign for plus is minus. So now we can see that square root of A plus square root of B has its conjugate. It has its conjugate. conjugates as square root of a minus square root of b and that's the conjugates of square root of a plus square root of b now if you have something like a minus square root of b remember to find the conjugate of this you have to change the sign in between them to its opposite so the opposite of minus here is plus so a minus square root of b has it conjugates that this has it conjugates as a plus square root of b and that is all about conjugate sets now let's take some illustrative examples on conjugate sets so for example one it says find the conjugate set of the following so the first one is four minus square root of five so the conjugate of 4 minus square root of 5 is nothing but we changing the sign in between 4 and square root of 5. So changing to op opposite sign is what makes it the conjugate. So here we are going to have 4 plus square root of 5. And that's the conjugate of this. Now let's try the next one. The next one is 2 plus 3 square root of 3. So to find the conjugates of 2 plus 3 square root of 3, then definitely we have to change the sign in between these two terms. So here, our conjugate now becomes 2 minus 3 square root of 3. So that's very practical. Now let's look at the next set of examples. So in example 3, we also want to find the conjugate of square root of 5. So the conjugate of square root of 5, remember, we have to change a sign to the, um, the opposite. So it is positive square root of 5, so its conjugate becomes negative square root of 5. That's the conjugate of square root of 5. Now to the last one, it says we should find the conjugate of 7. Remember... From the beginning we said that for conjugate our main focus is to change the sign between two binomial set so the underlying word here is a binomial set now in this case the number we're having here is a rational number that is seven as it is not a set or irrational number so we cannot apply conjugates here so for seven it means it has no conjugates it has no conjugates because one it is not a set for conjugates it's only applicable to sets so that is the illustrative examples we have under conjugate sets now let's note two things under conjugate sets and that is going to help us to understand conjugate set very well so the first note here it says the product of two conjugate sets is always a rational number but not a set. Let's repeat it. The product of two conjugate sets it is always a rational number but not a set. So if we take 4 minus square root of 5, now the conjugate now becomes 4 plus square root of 5 so now their product means that we are multiplying 
So that is all about this statement. The product of two conjugate sets, that is 4 minus square root of 5, has its conjugate as 4 plus square root of 5. And then their product is what we are talking about. Now, when you find their product, it's going to give us a rational number, but not a set. Now, let's see how this is applicable. So if you want to multiply this, then it means that first, we can see that our 4 is going to multiply the whole of uh, everything here. And then we can see that the negative 5 square root of 5 also going to multiply whatever we have here so by its application then it means we're going to have here as 4 multiplied by 4 plus square root of 5 and then minus square root of 5 multiplied by 4 plus square root of 5 so in this case 4 times 4 gives us 16 and 4 plus square root of 5 gives us 4 square root of 5 minus so we have 4 square root of 5 and then when minus square root of 5 multiplies positive square root of 5 then i'm going to get minus square root of 25. so further if you break this down we are going to have 16 plus so we can see here 4 square root of 5 we take away negative 4 square root of 5 and we can see clearly that we are left with minus square root of 25 and we all know that square root of 25 gives us um, 5 so it means 16 minus 5 so for 16 minus 5 we are going to get 11 so that's what we are talking about so the product of that is what we are talking about the product of two conjugate set is always a rational number but not a set so when we took the set 4 minus square root of 5 and multiplied by it conjugate we realized that we are getting 11 and the 11 here is a rational number so that is one of the things that we should note under conjugate sets having known this let's look at the last one we said we are looking at two things so it's the first one so we are going to look at the next one so the next one here is is talking about that is b the sum difference or quotient of two conjugate sets may not always be a rational number or a set let's repeat it the sum difference or quotient of two conjugate sets may not always be a rational number or a set so this simply means that if we have a set like square root of five plus square root of 3 and we find its conjugate that is going to be square root of 5 minus square root of 3 so if we take the sum that's the first one the sum of these two said its answer may not always be a rational number or a said which means it varies sometimes it can be a rational number and sometimes it can be a set unlike the product always when you find the product of two conjugate set definitely you are going to get a rational number but for the sum difference or quotient it's either you get a rational number or a set and that's the basic meaning so you are taking this so you take the sum so first we are working on the sum so when you take the sum of this conjugate set then basically means that square root of 5 plus square root of 5 and we have plus square root of 3 and then minus square root of 3 so when we sum this square root of 5 plus square root of 5 gives us 2 square root of 5 and for square root of 3 minus square root of 3 you are going to get 0 so just like we said when we find the sum of these two set we are getting um and um, we are getting a rational sorry we are getting a set we are getting a set so we find the sum of the conjugates of a set here we are getting a set now let's look at a different set that is going to give us a rational number under the same sum so we are still working on sum here so for it to be clear let's write here as sum so when we take the same sum of a different set that is 2 plus square root of 3 so its conjugate is going to be 2 minus square root of 3 
so when we sum this then definitely we are going to get 2 plus 2 plus square root of 3 minus square root of 3 so when we sum this then we are going to get 4 and square root of 3 minus square root of 3 is going to give us 0 so under the same sum when we take the conjugate of 2 plus square root of 3 we are getting a rational number that is 4 but under the same sum 2 when we take the conjugate of square root of 5 plus square root of 3 we are getting a set and that is what the b statement is talking about so for the sum difference quotient of two conjugate set it's either we get a rational number or a set it's not always going to be one sometimes or always we are going to get a rational number or a set so when you do the same thing for difference for quotient two you may or you are going to end up getting a rational number or a set so this ends to this video under conjugate set and i believe everything is okay so thanks for watching kindly like comment subscribe and say see you in our next video back math thinking beyond infinity